Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today um, for our Getting Started webinar for this year's Give Back Tahoe. Um, for those of you who are joining, we have a bunch of people coming in. If you can just let us know in the chat who you are, um, your name, the organization you're representing today, and we'll get started in a minute. Alrighty, excellent. Thank you for saying hello, everyone. We're excited to have you here. Um, just a quick housekeeping item to note before we get started. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and we're going to post it along with the slides in the nonprofit toolkit on the site under the About tab. Um, if you do have any questions while we're presenting, you can always send them through um, in the Q&A button on your screen and we'll get to those um, kind of throughout. And then at the end, of course, we'll also do some Q&A. Um, but welcome everyone. So I'm Sarah. I'm one of the project managers for this year's event um, with Mighty Cause, which uh, is the platform provider for Give Back Tahoe. We also have Caroline joining us today. Um, so I want to welcome uh, her and you can go ahead and say hello to everyone. Hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining. It's good to see some familiar names out there. Awesome. So we have, uh, let's see. So we have our agenda up. I just want to mention we'll be going through kind of the event basics. Uh, and then this year's webinar is a bit different. I'll be going through and kind of doing an on-site kind of demo for you all, um, kind of doing a refresher on the organization pages, how you can edit them, where you can find different reports and data that's available to you. Um, so if you've participated previously, this is a really good refresher. You can find some different things. Um, and then, of course, if you're brand new, this is going to be a really good uh, kind of walkthrough to see the capabilities and all the things that are available to you. Um, but we are super excited to have you all here. A brief overview of Mighty Cause. So um, if you haven't heard of us, we are a fully functional organization fundraising suite. Organizations can use uh, this platform on year round to raise money for your causes. Uh, we've been around since 2006, so quite a while, and we were actually one of the first platforms to host Giving Days. So we're super excited to be back with Give Back Tahoe again this year. Um, so we will get started. I'm going to actually pass it over to Caroline. You can cover some of the basics. Sure. Well, I'm sure, as most of you know, um, TTCF is the sponsor of this event. Um, you can see our mission statement there, but one of the pillars to our mission statement is really strengthening our nonprofits, and we do that through grant making, trainings such as this year's facilitated leadership training, and then also Give Back Tahoe. So this is our ninth annual Give Back Tahoe end of year fundraising campaign. Um, it will kick off November 29th on Giving Tuesday. We do see that most of um, the donations do tend to come in on Giving Tuesday since it is such a worldwide campaign um, and it gets so much attention. Um, so again, our challenge grants will probably be, um, the larger challenge grants will probably go to that day again, but more to come on that in the next week or so. Um, and the challenge grant period will last two weeks. Um, I believe it's actually December 13th, not 14th, that's the Tuesday. Um, okay. Yeah. We'll have to double check that. But um, so two weeks is the challenge grant period where we encourage the nonprofits just to focus their marketing efforts around those first two weeks. Um, just to kind of give you a break, we used to do it all month long and we found that that was a lot. And some of you have your own end of year fundraising campaigns. So we do really just focus on those first two weeks for the challenge grants, but um, we keep the giving season going really all month long because we found that a lot of donors still tend to give those last two weeks. So that kind of explains the dates. Um, and then we also have the site open all year long. So we really wanna encourage you guys to be using it for volunteer recruitment. There's some new event functionalities, um, but just to keep your profile updated, um, and I know some of you do use it all year long for your donations. Um, so, so yeah, that's the Give Back Tahoe summary. Awesome, thank you. Um, so real quick, what is a giving day? If you are brand new, um, if you've never participated in a giving day before, it's basically an online fundraising marathon that's aiming to bring people together to support a specific community, a cause or a space. 
Um, so in this case, you know, we're running this uh, giving event. It's uh, we're rallying you, the organizations, to raise funds, uh, solicit new donors, engage maybe some older donors, um, organizations that are participating in the day. You have access to the resources, the nonprofit toolkit, um, all of these tools that have been provided by the host to reach out to your supporters, to solicit your donations, secure your fundraisers, um, and work on growing your network. Um, as noted, a giving day, it's a unique campaign that's providing participants the opportunity to capitalize on the urgency of a limited time frame. Um, in this case, you know you have a few weeks, you're raising uh, as much money as you can, trying to get your messages out, uh, reach out to new donors. Um, but overall, it's a really exciting way for you to engage your sponsors, maybe reach out to community partners if you haven't tried that before. Um, it's a good way to take some time to also try to learn new things. If you say haven't done matching grants before, it's a good opportunity to do that. You can reach out, see if you know have you have donors who would be willing to give matching grants. Um, but really, the limited time frame is going to create that sense of urgency, so that donors are going to respond um, and then help you reach the goals that you have set for yourself for the campaign. Um, before you get started, of course, you do need to register your nonprofit. So every year you're going to have to register. This allows us to collect some information, uh, make sure things are current, if there's anything that has changed. Um, but it's a really easy form. If you have done it, wonderful. If you have not, uh, it's on the website. Um, the deadline to register is October 26, I believe. Uh, and then TTCF is reproving all the organizations. They're reviewing the criteria, making sure that everything's answered. Um, and then once you are registered, you can then go in and you can make adjustments to your page, start filling out you know, your new um, goals for this year's campaign. You can also add new administrators. If you have some old administrators that need to be removed, you can do that as well. Um, but you do need to register for the event in order to be eligible for grants and accept donations um, during the event period. Um, so once you are registered, um, and you're probably wondering, what do you need to do? So the biggest things are going to be updating the content on your page. Um, if anything's changed, if you're fundraising for something new, just letting everyone know kind of what is happening for your organization this year. Um, you also want to access the nonprofit toolkit. It has a ton of materials available to you. Um, you can sign up for additional webinars. Uh, just kind of look through. There's a bunch of support articles in there as well. If you're wondering like how to fundraise anything from kind of kind of beginner level content to more advanced um, kind of support materials. Uh, and then you're going to need to start to broadcast your campaign's message. So you're going to want to start like figuring out your strategy, which we have in our next webinar is all about strategy different outreach methods you can use to connect with your networks, uh, your donor, donor network, um, and social media. Uh, and like I was mentioning, you're going to want to try to secure matching grants, some different things to entice donors during the event. Um, if you would like, you can also try peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Uh, and overall, just thinking uh, how you can you know, have an engaging campaign um, for your donors. Um, so I'm going to stop screen share because this is where I'm going to get into kind of the platform overview. Um, so I will be right back. Hold on one second, my internet is going really slow at the moment.
Okay, great. Moment of panic, but we are back. Um, okay, so um, first things first, when you get uh, kind of registered, so I wanted to show you, of course, this is the website. Um, you can find the registration here. But when you're ready and you're ready to go back and get logged in, you're gonna wanna come back to the Give Back Tahoe site um, and you'll click log in on the top right. Um, so from here, you can log in using Google or Facebook. Um, you can also just log in through the email address that you have attached to your organization account. Um, and of course, if you are brand new and you have not, you know, registered or set up anything yet, you can also do that through this uh, kind of login interface as well. You can add your email and it'll prompt you to create a password and you can create an account. Um, so I do want to share that. So we'll pretend that I got logged in and now I'm over on my uh, sample uh, organization page. So this is your dashboard. Um, you uh, have all access to all your information here. You can see whether or not you're registered for Give Back Tahoe. It'll notify you here. Um, if you haven't registered and you are attached to the brand, it'll say registration is not open for Give Back Tahoe. Um, you also have access to your to-do list, which is here. We have a kind of a, a bunch of different kind of um, required recommended things that we suggest for you all to complete. Uh, you also have access to a bunch of different kind of statistics, metrics here for you. Um, but on the left side of your dashboard is where you're going to find pretty much all of the uh, tabs for all the information you could ever want. Um, so from here, you can see you have uh, your organization page, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, it also provides you with a little tutorial walkthrough when you log in for the first time. Um, we also have fundraising tools available to you. So you can see all of these, your campaigns, your peer-to-peer -peer campaigns, widgets, matching grants, um, your volunteers opportunities tool, fundraiser templates, items like that. Um, we also have reporting here. This is where you can preview and export different donation reports, donor retention reports, um, review your disbursements. Under checkouts, you can customize donation forms, you can customize your thank you page um, and your receipt. Um, and then also under here, we'll just jump into settings real quick. This is where you can manage organization settings like URL customization, your admin controls, um, where you can just see who is an admin for your organization uh, and then also go in and add and remove whoever needs to be added or removed. Um, so we'll go back to the organization page. Uh, since it's a demo, it's going to want to continue <laughs> to give me this tutorial. Um, but from here, this is pretty much the face of your organization for the event. So just want to make sure it looks good and make sure it's representing your organization well. Um, you can customize your organization page by just toggling on and off this edit mode so you can see what's available to edit and not. You can also see kind of what it would look like uh, if you are a donor. Um, it's all on page editing, so you can see it shows you where everything's editable. Uh, and just real quick, just so you know, when you're sharing with your supporters and you want to direct them to your page, this is the URL you're going to use, and you'll know you're in the right place because it'll it won't say you're giving to it; it'll say Give Back Tahoe. Um, so that's what you'll share if you're like sending out email newsletters or things like that. We sometimes get questions, so I want to touch on that. Um, but the first thing you'll want to do when editing your profile is upload your organization's logo. Make sure your logo, if it's uh, if it's kind of blurry or anything, you'll want to make sure it's nice and clear. Uh, it's pretty much a one-to-one. -one. So any kind of uh, logo that you use on social media platforms will pretty much work here as well. Um, if you have one on Facebook or Twitter like that. Uh, but next, you'll want to upload a nice background image that kind of reflects your organization. Um, it's very easy to change it. You can add a color overlay. Um, you can just, you can see that you can frame your photo the way you want. Uh, you can use kind of pre-filled kind of images that we have available to you, but you can also upload kind of a direct photo that you have for your organization. Um, super easy, very quick. Uh, you can also change the color. So if you have a brand color that you use for your organization, you can select that here. Uh, that's going to be the color that is like your buttons and stuff like that. Um, as you scroll down, uh, you can see you have the donate button and the fundraise button. So donate, of course, is where people are going to donate to your organization. Fundraise is optional to, you can hide it or not. 
Um, but this is where people will be directed if they want to peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraise for you. So they can click this button and set up a peer-to-peer -peer page. Um, share this organization, of course, people can share your organization through email or Facebook, whatever social media accounts they use. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see that you also have, uh, you can do a goal bar, so you can either hide it or not hide it. Um, maybe during the giving season you want it showing, but then, you know, if you use this page year round, you might not want a goal bar, so you can hide it after the event. Um, but you can set your goal, you can edit your goal, um, update it. Uh, and you can choose what stats are also displayed. So if you want to show, of course, you're not raised, maybe you don't want to show number of donors. Um, maybe you don't want to include offline donations, you can turn that off. You can also start the calculation at the specific date and start time. Um, so you can set that for uh, the Giving Tuesday date. Um, and then as you scroll down, you'll see that you just have a ton of editing capabilities here. Um, you can really kind of start to fill out your about page. This is the centerpiece of your page. Um, in your story, you can put a mission statement, you can add photos, videos. Uh, we really like to highlight this section because this is your, you know, a really great chance for you to talk to your donors. If there's anything new you're fundraising for, if you have a new video, um, anything that you want people to see pretty much immediately, you can add that here. We also have the option for one additional custom tab that you can fill out. Uh, if you want to add information about your staff, or maybe this is more of an evergreen kind of area where you want to just include information about your nonprofit. And then on the custom tab, you want to include information about what you're specifically campaigning for this year. Um, so that's a cool little addition. Um, as we scroll down, you uh, I should mention also that this is all format formatting tools available to you. So you can change uh, different kind of styles, you can add bulleted points, um, you can add a link to something, photos, videos. If you do have a video, you just need to add the URL, so you will need to upload it first to YouTube or Vimeo. You can add that here. Um, well, we have just a bunch of kind of rich editing capabilities, um, add buttons, emojis if you're into that. Um, but it's all on page editing, so as you uh, type something, you'll just need to also click save, um, just so you don't miss that. Uh, but yeah, so it's a lot of really great editing capabilities here. If you have featured campaigns, if you have peer-to-peer -peer campaigns you're trying to kind of highlight, you can add those here. You can delete old campaigns if they're no longer relevant. Um, you can see here that you also have access to view all of the peer-to-peer -peer campaigns that are supporting your organization. Um, you can also add an additional media gallery. Uh, you can connect your Instagram and Facebook so that as you add posts kind of throughout the event, those also get added here so people can see it in real time. Um, and then, of course, your organization data. So if there's anything you need to edit, if you have a new phone number or you have an email address you don't need to edit, um, this is what donors will be able to see. So you can add whatever is relevant to your social media, anything like that. Uh, if anyone has any questions on that section, um, I am going to go into the donation flow. Um, so in your checkout, you have uh, the ability to kind of customize a little bit of your donation form, your thank you page, and your donation receipt. So we definitely recommend taking some time to really kind of fill those out and make sure they have uh, pretty much all the information that you would want a donor to see. So once again, you have the edit mode toggle so you can see how you can edit. Um, this is your copy direct donate link. So if you wanted to not just send someone to your organization page, but you wanted to send them to donate, like you had a call to action in an email that said donate, you can copy this link and it will bring you to uh, this form. So people can directly donate. So, um, so we do have a wonderful feature for donors to choose one-time donation or monthly donation. Um, so you can, uh, I mean, I wouldn't recommend hiding it, but I'm showing you all the capabilities here, so you could hide it. Uh, but I would encourage your donors, you know, to try, if they can, to provide a monthly donation gift to you all. Um, but within each of these box, you can set kind of customized donation dollar amounts, and you can also add a description. So this is really impactful for donors. They might not know what it takes to do something for your organization, and this is a great way for you to kind of explain like how much it costs for you to do the things that you do. Um, so in this case, you know, $30 to vaccinate two rescue dogs, $100 for transport. This is also a wonderful opportunity for you to 
not just to share, but for the donors themselves to kind of think about how much they want to give. They might have come in thinking they, you know, wanted to give you $40 and then realize, wow, transporting rescue dogs sounds fantastic. Like I'm going to go and do that instead. Um, so definitely taking some time to kind of thoughtfully communicate what it is that your dollars, what their dollars go to for your organization. And then, of course, they can also customize a donation amount. So if they wanted to, they could enter whatever amount they wanted. Uh, this is where they can also kind of hide from public display. Um, you can opt to uh, allow them to make a dedication to the donation um, and any other kind of information you want to collect. So you can add, I believe it is one additional question to the donation form. Um, this year, we also have uh, an additional question um, through Give Back Tahoe. So in an effort to kind of advocate for volunteering and extend the call for volunteer opportunities, uh, because that is such a major part of Give Back Tahoe, um, we created a custom question that's already included in your checkout form. So you'll check that out. Of course, I don't have this as an example because um, actually this is the example, <laughs> it just so happens. But you'll see a question that looks just like this. Would you be interested in volunteering for um, this nonprofit? So your nonprofit. Um, and it's automatically included in your donation form. Uh, if you are like, hey, we don't have any volunteering opportunities at this point in time, you can also unpublish this section from your form. Um, but basically what this does is it allows the donor an option to select and then also uh, pledge a certain number of hours for the year. Um, so they can pledge, you know, other uh, 40 hours um, whatever they're able to do, but it's a nice little way to kind of also collect that information so that you all as organizations can see who is interested in volunteering um, and who is who is maybe doesn't have that uh, ability at this point. But this will all be uh, included in your downloadable donation uh, report. So you can see who's interested and then kind of your um, messaging after the event to these um, volunteer interest volunteers, I guess. <laughs> um, and then, of course, this is what the actual payment method window is going to look like um, so that you kind of get the entire idea. But definitely take some time, consider whether or not you have volunteering opportunities, um, and then customize this section. Definitely take some time to fill that out. Um, and then when you're totally done, you can test it by toggling off the edit mode. Um, I want to get into, let's see, I'll show you the thank you page. Um, you also have capability to edit this section. Um, this is what's going to pop up after someone says, uh, like after someone donates. Um, so you're going to want to customize this. You can add photos. Maybe you want to add a photo of your staff. Um, you can add a video, a thank you video, maybe from your board of directors. Um, whatever you want, however you want to communicate your thanks. Uh, this is what we have available to you. And then we also do encourage you to reach out after the event um, in kind of a special new way outside of the platform just to thank donors uh, directly as well. Um, you also have, you can see the donation receipt. So you can add a custom message. This is what is going to be on the donation receipt, the tax receipt that gets sent to the donor. So we are going to have kind of a already filled out receipt for Give Back Tahoe, but there is a small space for you to also add a little custom message um, here as well. So take a second to fill that out as well. Um, we're going to head into the report section on your dashboard. So just a ton of reports available to you. Um, it's divided into five areas. So we have donations, offline donations, recurring donations, um, retention and disbursements. Um, so your donation report is available to you in real time. Um, it includes all the information like the donor name, the email, the address, um, if you've collected that, the donation amount. Um, and then on the donation report, you can click to download. So the full downloaded report is going to have all the information like that volunteer question, um, any designations or dedications, kind of the full picture, um, the gross net amount of the donation, any additional questions. Um, so you can download that if you need the complete data. Just a note that always is going to default to the last 30 days. So if you do need like a year, uh, you can um, do a year to date. 
You can do month to date. You can also just add a custom date range. So it's always going to do a year. If you need two years ago, you're just going to enter in the start date from two years ago to the end date of last year. Um, it's also really convenient. You can also just sort by campaign type. So if you're like, I just want to see how, uh, get a full list of donors from uh, Give Back Tahoe last year, you can select that giving event and then you can select the campaign Give Back Tahoe 2021. So that's super easy to use. Um, disbursements, let's see. Uh, this is a kind of sample account, so there's no disbursements, but this is where you would find your disbursement history. You can click on individual disbursement listings. It'll open up more information about that disbursement, like which don donations were included in the report. Um, it also gives you a total summary, um, total amount, total associated fees, any net amount included in that disbursement. Um, and then we're going to go back to reports. Uh, retention, this is going to be a really important section for you all to use if you've previously participated in Give Back Tahoe. Um, this section allows you to export your list of unretained donors, um, so people who have not given to you during the event this year. You can send individual emails, you can download the full report and add them to you know, your MailChimp or whatever your mail service is uh, to reach out to them. Um, but basically what you'll do is you'll just filter by status, you'll go to not retained and you can select the time period. Um, you can search the report. It's very helpful. So I definitely recommend using this as part of your campaign strategy for outreach this year. Um, we also have offline donations. So to add, um, if, you, if you happen to have offline donations, you can add them uh, through this kind of portal, super easy. This is all just for uh, data purposes on your end. Um, they won't you know, be showing on leaderboards or anything like that. Uh, but it's super simple as far as just keeping track of anything that might come in that's not an online donation. Um, and then we also have uh, in fundraising tools, we have matching grants. Um, I'm kind of doing a quick overview for everyone. So if anyone has any questions or is like, hey, can you talk a little bit more about something? You can just let me know. Um, but within fundraising tools, this is going to be a good key area for you. Uh, you can manage your peer to peer campaigns. Um, you have widgets, which we'll talk about. Uh, and of course, matching grants, which is going to be a good tool to use to kind of uh, encourage donors to give so they can kind of get more bang for the buck. Um, but you can see you have live matches, anything that's queued for upcoming and any past matches. You have all of that information here. Um, past matches, you can download a full report to see which donations were matched um, and how much was matched. Um, but to create a match, it's super easy. You'll just go to create. And from here, you can kind of take some time, uh, fill it out, add a logo if it's like a corporate sponsor match. Um, if it's a donor, maybe it's your board of directors, you can add a photo. Um, you can name your match. You can hide the name publicly if they choose to stay anonymous add your match value. Um, we'll go over this in a second, but basically just you can see how easy it is. You can select your date and start time. You can select the options for the match, um, what percentage you want matched. Uh, you can also match up to a maximum dollar amount. So say you have a thousand dollar match, but you don't want uh, it to be kind of eaten up immediately. And the chance that you know someone gives you a thousand dollar donation which is great but that would uh, absorb your entire match instantly um, and matches are really good kind of marketing tools so you can use that as a motivation for donors to give so you do probably want to consider adding a max dollar amount maybe you want to match up to a hundred dollars per donation so if someone donates you know two hundred dollars they get a hundred dollars if someone donates a uh, hundred dollars you'll match a hundred dollars um, but totally up to you however much you want to match. You can also just keep it to 100%, one-to-one. Uh, there's also additional match conditions you are welcome to include. Um, if you want to include organization fundraisers in the match, you can do that as well. That means that if someone has a peer-to-peer -peer page set up and they're fundraising for you on their peer-to-peer -peer page, any donations that come in through their peer-to-peer -peer page will also be matched. So they'll get to use the match that you have live. Um, so that's all wonderful, kind of just a bunch of different uh, capability here. Um, as far as including match value and page metrics, it's important to note uh, that online donations, um, 
well, I'll start back a little bit. So this, by checking this box, it means that it's going to show in your page metrics. Um, so that basically means if someone donates $10, the additional $10 matched will show in your organization metrics. Um, we consider that, you know, I will use the term fake money because it's not real money yet. It's all just a visual. Um, once the match is fulfilled and completed, you'll want to enter that match uh, as an online donation so that it can count towards the leaderboards. Um, so when you're ready to do that, you'll want to um, go to your, I'll show you where it is real quick. When you're ready to do that so that it doesn't repeat, you don't want to double your match um, because we're already showing the fake money and now you're ready to add the real money. So you'll want to hide the match amount from your page totals. Um, that makes it so that when you are ready and you add the real money, it's not double counting. It's not saying, hey, you already matched it and now you're getting another online donation. Um, so one thing to consider Usually, I like to just bring this up because we get some questions during events. Uh, if your totals aren't looking correct on maybe a leaderboard or you're confused, you might want to see if you've had a match that's been completed and already been fulfilled by the grantor and just toggle that off. Um, let's see, where was I? Um, uh, yes, okay, so as far as matching grants go, um, we'll have kind of a lot more information about kind of how to have a strategy for matching grants, how to start securing matching grants. Um, some cool things about the match, because it is a fundraising tool, because it is a really great marketing tool, when you do have a matching grant live, we'll have a little kind of sticker on the donate button that says that you have a matching grant live. Um, on the actual Give Back Tahoe website, under the search button, people, donors will be able to search for organizations that have matching grants that are live. Um, and then as well as on the uh, live site, there will be a tab on the site that has matching grants for the event. Um, so if you're not showing up in the search with your matching grant, it's likely because your matching grant isn't live yet. That's kind of in a real time uh, kind of search flow for the donor so they can see exactly what's live. Um, but really cool features available to you. So start reaching out for matching grants, um, kind of testing the waters to see who would be interested in providing your organization a grant. Um, let's see, I'm going to go into settings. Um, actually, I'll touch on campaigns just so you can see this section since we're here. Um, your campaign section is where you're going to have all the data available to you for peer to peer kind of fundraisers. Um, so if someone is fundraising for you, you'll be able to see all that information. Um, if you have a fundraiser that's set up for a particular fundraising campaign, you'll see that here as well. Um, you can see owner describes admin or a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, uh, someone fundraising on your behalf. So all of that data is here for you. Um, we also have fundraiser templates, which is really helpful. So if your if your goal is to try to get some more peer-to-peer peer-to-peer fundraisers this year, one way to make it really easy on people who are peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is to go in and create a template. So you can create a template. Um, this is basically a pre-filled out kind of starting point for the pages that people will be funding on, fundraising on. Um, so you can title their peer-to-peer -peer page for them. You can add a goal for them if you want. Um, you can add your logo. You can add an image. You can start by creating a short story. Maybe you want to add your mission statement. Um, and so you can kind of fill out however you'd like uh, to make it kind of easier for people to begin filling out the page. Of course, they can also go in and make edits and kind of customize the page completely to their own liking. Um, but this helps them as kind of a jumping off point. It also looks nice when you've kind of started a page and seen that the organization has taken time to kind of help you a little bit as well. Um, we also, I want to touch on the opportunities tool. So uh, there's a couple things that are a little different this year. Uh, we've made some changes to it, um, but you do, it's the same kind of easy interface. You add an opportunity. Um, we have capability here to do in-person or online. So depending on what 
kind of maybe you have a, a Zoom volunteering opportunity where people can do it kind of remotely. So you can add that um, in person. You can do volunteering or you can do a calendar event. Say you have, you know, an event happening that's not volunteering, that would be considered kind of an opportunity. Um, so you can do calendar event. Um, you can also manage where the opportunity is. So if you have like an Eventbrite URL, maybe people need tickets to purchase, um, you can add that URL here. You can also just host it on uh, Mighty Cause uh, so that say there's no like Eventbrite, then nothing will populate. It'll just be uh, registration through Mighty Cause. Um, you have the details of your opportunity, whatever it is, where it's going to be. Um, and then you can also label your opportunity as far as how often it is. If there's a specific date, time, maybe it's you know every Thursday at 2 p.m. Um, so you can create your opportunities here. Uh, and these will also be available within the search. So donors can go into the search and they can search by volunteering opportunities. Um, so, uh, so yes, add all of your volunteering opportunities here. Um, what else do I want to share in the fundraising tools? Uh, widgets are really great at capturing donations that might be coming through outside of your uh, Mighty Cause kind of give back Tahoe organization page. So if you find that you have donors, um, some donors that just always are going to come to your website and always make their donation through your website, um, in order for the funds, the online donations to count towards, uh, you know, prizes and grants, they're going to need to be made through your Give Back Tahoe site. So this is a, a great little way to embed a donate button on your organization's actual website. So if you have someone who comes and donates, they can click this button that you have embedded on your website. And all of those donations are going to be counted directly for your organization page. So you can kind of capture as much as possible to, to make sure it goes towards um, the actual event. Um, so we have three different styles for you. We have the mini donation form, which includes uh, your adorable little <laughs> checkout flow with what kind of dollars go where. Um, we also have, like you just saw, the actual little donate button, if that's all you need. Um, and then we have a thumbnail. You're welcome to add a, you know, multiple of these around your site. There's no real limit. Um, so if you want to add this to your homepage during the fundraising event, so people know to go check out your page here. Um, but you'll generate the code and then you can either embed it yourself on your website or you can give it to your kind of website developer to add to the page wherever you need. Um, so those are really uh, great tools to use uh, outside of the platform. Um, I did reports. Uh, if anyone has any questions, let me know. Uh, I'm going to go into settings. Um, from here, you have just kind of a bunch of different setting kind of ways to edit your profile. So you always start with admins, check, make sure that everybody listed here is still relevant. Does anyone need to be removed? Um, you can remove people. Um, you can also add admins. So if you're like, hey, we have a new uh, manager for the event you can add a new admin here you just need their first name last name email uh, position um, and you can send them a invite to be an administrator for your page um back in the settings we also have your general settings this is where you can go to customize the url at the top of your page so where it says excuse me animal humane society um, you can update it if you need to, if you haven't already. Um, you can also add an alternate search names. So if you're if you're known by people, donors, as a different kind of name, you can add those because these will also be um, within the actual search here. Uh, donors can search for you um, using those additional search names. Um, and then you can also update your social sharing settings. So double check, make sure that if you have any old dates, old years listed, you can update that. This is what people will see when they click that share button um, on the front of your page where it says share this organization. So if you have hashtags you want people to include, you can update that, you can add your logo. Um, you also can update your organization's information. 
Um, if you have a new address that you need to update, if you have a new legal name, if you have any information that you need to update, um, say you got new paperwork from the IRS that you'd like to update, you can do that here. Um, you can also update your disbursement settings. So if you uh, would like EFT set up, you can switch to that um, or you can update mailing address for checks. Uh, so I believe that I have gone through all of these sections. I know it was fast. So if anyone is curious about anything, um, you can let me know. Uh, but I will switch it back real quick to our presentation. Um, so yes, yeah, so that was a quick walkthrough, but hopefully uh, beneficial for you all to kind of see um, just all of the different capabilities. Maybe there's things you didn't know about. Maybe they didn't know you can create a fundraiser template for peer to peer, and that's something you want to explore a little bit more. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out. Uh, but I also want to list the Give Back to Home resources. So under About on the website, you'll have Nonprofit Toolkit. You can see all of the upcoming workshops, um, different kind of tips and tricks and tutorials and guides. Um, I also want to mention the next webinar is Fundraising Strategies on October 26 at 9.30 a.m. Um, so we'll be going over in depth different fundraising strategies as far as securing matching grants, how to kind of create a timeline for yourself, um, for strategy, how to reach out to donors, social media tips, um, email tips, and things like that. Um, and then, of course, uh, check out the FAQs. Uh, prizes will be coming soon. Um, and so you have them, the support resources uh, available to you. So Give Back Tahoe's team, Mighty Cause support teams are also here for you, um, as well as our full support, support library. So we have a bunch of nonprofit support articles. We also have a blog um, where we keep pretty current, um, just like with different fundraising tips, tricks, uh, different kind of strategies to reach out to donors. So definitely check that out as well. Um, I'm going to switch it back to you, Caroline, if you have anything to add or if you want to see if any questions come in. Uh, thank you so much, Sarah. That was great. Um, I haven't seen any questions in the chat, um, so I'm just going to assume that means no, unless is anyone, are you able to raise your hand in the webinar? Yeah, looks like you are. Don't see any of that, um, but yeah, I hope everyone will be able to join us next week for fundraising strategies, and we hope to have um, our challenge grant structure um, locked in by then, so that'll help as well. So you can answer and ask any questions then. Um, and yes, yeah, so there's Sarah's email there, or the Mighty Cause Support, and I'm Caroline at ttcf.net if you have any questions for TTCF and myself. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your day.